It's not that kind of choking. I mean, like, unless you're into that, no judgment. Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? Today we're going to talk about choking and collaring. This is one of the very basic intermediate skills you are going to need further down your wheel throwing career. Choking and or collaring is one of the very basic techniques you are really, really going to need once you get into the intermediate phases when you start making things like bottles and things that are way more shapely like this. Who put all this clay on my bottle? As far as I know, there are four different ways to choke and or collar, and there's a couple of tips and tricks I can teach you guys today to make this much easier for you. But first, we have to throw our cylinder. Potter tip that you should probably already know, but I don't think we've talked about it yet. Me and your mother really haven't had a sit down. As far as the beginner section is concerned, you've pretty much been practicing doing two things. You've been centering and making things flatter, which is also part of centering, coning up and down, and you've been expanding things or making things have a belly. All throughout the beginner section, you've been making bowls, you've been making cups, you've been making plates, maybe you've even been making vases, but all of those things require you to basically get your hand, wet it a little bit, stick it inside of your already straight cylinder and make something come outwards and make a little belly just like this. However, what you're learning today is the exact opposite. You're not learning how to push clay out. Choking is just deciding what point you're going to take and make smaller and that's anywhere from a focal point such as the top or the entire cylinder. No longer are we trying to make things larger. Like my but there is one main, very obvious, although you might not have noticed right away, point that I need to make to you before we start our lesson on coloring. See this? This is basically a super tiny bowl. I haven't really popped it out all that much yet. It's kind of like a bowl slash cylinder, but it measures out right now at about almost four inches tall. The one thing that I need you guys to learn today is that these things have opposites when you're choking and pushing out. When you push out, you are always going to lose a little bit of height from your cylinder from whence you started. This, when we first started, was about four inches. Out of that cylinder slash bowl, I've made a full bowl, which means that I expanded the clay a lot further from its original point where it was, which was about right here. Now it's fully formed into a bowl. And because of that, I expanded the clay. It's become a lot squattier. It has now become three inches tall. The thing that I want you to take away from this lesson is that when you expand clay, it loses height. And most of you probably already knew that. That's kind of a no duh thing. But I also want you to understand that before we get started, as you choke in a certain point or as you decide to collar, your clay will actually gain height. And this is one of the techniques that usually potters use to gain height or re-choke in and re-thicken their cylinder. When I'm expanding the clay, I am making this clay thinner technically. It's taking up more space with the same material and that means that that same material needs to expand outward. It becomes thinner and thinner as I expand it and the exact opposite will happen once we decide to choke in or collar our new cylinder. It'll become a little bit thicker instead of becoming thinner because the opposite happened when it became thinner and it'll gain height instead of subtract height because of course the opposite happened when we expanded the clay body. Oh. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's make our actual cylinder and talk about the four ways that I know how to choke and collar. There are four different ways that I know of how to choke or collar. Number one is the four point choke. I've seen some people do it with their knuckles like this, but I prefer to do the four point with my fingers like this. It's called the four point choke because you're engaging the cylinder on four different points of contact with your hand. One, two, three, four. This is how the four point choke looks. The four 
point choke is good when you specifically want to take a little space of clay and you just want to choke that part in. It doesn't take much effort, but the key is that each and every one of these chokes does need a little bit of water on the cylinder every time you perform it. I mean, just like with any anything you're gonna do with clay, you need a little bit of water. I lowered the camera down to this angle because I feel like if you just saw it from this angle up here, you would basically just see me squeezing in the cylinder from the top. You wouldn't really see what's going on. Keep in mind that I'm moving both of my hands at a very even pace, and it's only making contact with technically four points. And I'm just squeezing in and I'm moving up as I squeeze in. This type of choke is specifically made for the top. Whenever I do this, I'm usually choking or collaring in the top of my cylinder. And it's much easier to pull from this point on. As I said earlier, if you expand clay, it gets a little bit thinner and loses a little bit height. But the opposite happens whenever you choke clay in. When you choke clay in, you're technically going to make this a little bit thicker and gain a little bit of height. The second choke that I use is the six point choke. And as you might have guessed, you're making contact with six different points with your hands in the cylinder. These points are one, two, three, four, five, six. It's kind of like the four point choke, but the difference is you're resting your knuckles on there as well. This type of choke is meant for a little bit more clay. The last choke, the four point choke, we basically took one area and choked it in. But with the six point, you have more points of contact meaning that you can choke in a little bit more clay with a little bit more pressure. For example, this would be a little bit hard. The clay starts to kind of wobble on me a little bit. Because with the four point choke, I'm basically only controlling one section of clay at a time and moving my hands upwards. This only controls a little bit of clay at a time. But with the six point choke, I can put two down here, two up here and two right here. I have control of the middle of where I'm trying to choke, I have control of the top, and I have control of the very bottom. And this entire section from here to here is where I now have control. Now, if I wanted to, I can move from this point to this point. And this simple movement here keeps in contact with this entire piece of clay versus the four point choke, which was, I mean, it was still this piece of clay, but I don't have stability in the middle. With the six point choke, I can take a small cylinder of about this size, this is fairly small to me, and choke in the entire thing all at once and keep that constant pressure, which moves up the majority of my clay. Potter tip. If you're ever using the six point choke and you come right here and you start moving upwards and the top gets a little bit wiggly as it usually does, this is a fairly normal thing, go ahead and take the two top portions of your fingers and just kind of crux them into the very top, push down and hold that position. Sooner or later, this clay body will start to even out and it'll stop wiggling as much. The six point choke is making sure that you have a little bit more pressure and is usually used to squeeze things in really, really hard. Plus, now you have these two extra fingers so you can even out the very top at the very top of your cylinder. This helps with the evenness on the inside of the clay a lot. Usually, whenever I do this technique, I'll go all the way up and once I get to the very top, I no longer need to stabilize this entire space. These fingers aren't really doing anything at the top. So I'll simply put them on the inside of my cylinder and keep going upwards as I squeeze in. The third way is called the full choke or the full collar. Technically speaking, everything that I've been showing you thus far being four point and six point are chokes because you're getting one central point and choking it inwards, kind of at the neck of the piece. But what I'm about to show you now is technically a collar because you're going to be doing the entire piece. But the full choke or the full collar is usually done with very large pieces. So uh, just give me a second. Before I full choke this in, I want you guys to remember something I said earlier. This right now stands at about five and a half, almost six inches tall. The full choke, or the full collar at least, is a technique where you start all the way at the very bottom of the cylinder and you're making full contact with the entire vessel. Technically speaking, you're going to be touching the entirety of the outside of your clay body throughout this choke. Okay, get my hands a little wet. Starting all the way at the bottom of your cylinder with full contact with both hands, stretch your fingers out a little bit because if you had them like this, you're only having control of this much of the cylinder. Squeeze in and keep that constant pressure and keep moving up the cylinder as you go along. Keep in mind what I said earlier with the six point choke. As you do this, 
Go ahead, take your top fingers that aren't really touching the vessel anymore and crux them in kind of like they were hooks. This will prevent the top from wiggling as much. That was a full choke, and although it didn't look like it got too much more height, I technically just recondensed this entire cylinder so I can pull it one more time. Now my clay body isn't as thin, it probably won't wiggle as much or won't cause as many twists, and in case I was ever making a bottle form or something with a smaller mouth at the top, my job is to keep this mouth in, and this choke helps with that massively. A lot of potters use this technique specifically before they end up pulling a second or third time to make sure that all their clay is even and condensed so they have all that clay that they would like to pull up be nice and even. Remember the measurement that we took earlier before this choke? It was at about five and a half to six inches. Now, if we check it, even though that wasn't a very powerful full choke, it's at about six and a half, almost seven inches. We gained a whole inch simply by choking one time. Potter tip. Some people have problems with the whole finger technique of putting their hands from this angle to this angle here. I don't, but it's because I have big old sausage hands. Something that I've seen help other people is that when they start choking, they have a difficult time with their fingers spreading across. One thing that I've seen help a lot with this is that they'll take their wrists and they'll put them downwards, forcing their hands to go upwards. Their hands go from this position to this position, and it makes the stretch a lot easier. If my wrists were all the way up, however, it'd be a little bit difficult to, it, it, it'd be all thumbs. I've seen this tip help specifically for people with smaller hands. I have these big old sausage hands, so I don't have really a problem with taking my entire six or seven inch cylinder and grabbing the heck out of it. Now that we've condensed in all of our clay and gotten a little bit of height, we can pull again. Potter tip, except for you need to know, it's, it's not a tip, you need to know this one. If you're ever choking in and you have a cylinder or at least a circle that has something that's a little bit smaller than your entire hand, you have one of two options, as this will become a fairly common problem with making bottle shapes. One, you can outstretch the cylinder again and make enough room for you to actually put your hand inside of. This sometimes, if you keep doing it enough, will tire out the clay. Or, number two, wet your entire hand, and sometimes your forearm if you have a really tall cylinder, and just stick it all the way in there. This wet hand and wrist will allow for the hydroplaning effect to happen on your hands, and it won't pull and drag as much. The one downside to this is that you're probably gonna get a lot of water inside your cylinder, so before you actually close up the cylinder or work on it anymore, I highly suggest you get a sponge and take that water out. And if you're real brave, you ain't even gotta open it. You can just like wet your hand and stick it straight in there. Now this might seem like an excellent technique because you might be thinking to yourself, Dante, I can do this forever. I can choke in, condense my clay, and then thin it out while I'm pulling. Choke in, condense my clay, and thin it out while I'm pulling, and get forever height. But that's kind of not the way it works. Hold on there, Evergreen. I feel like it's my responsibility to remind you guys that clay does get tired. And this means that you can't do this technique over and over and over again. You guys remember that one time we were talking about pulling cylinders, and how about if you stay on one part way too long, it'll twist, because you're technically putting friction on one part of your cylinder, and not the other part. Here, flashback. Flashback. The wheel is still technically moving at a constant speed and your fingers are still creating pressure on the cylinder right here and because of that that friction is causing that specific spot on your pottery to move a little bit slower than the rest of the speed of the wheel this primarily for beginners is what causes twisting and a flashback putting too much friction on one part of the cylinder means that that friction technically slows down the part you're touching while the rest of it and the wheel is still spinning at a constant rate as I explained in the previous video but this can also happen horizontally you see the last time we wiggled our clay while we were pulling it kind of happened vertically we stayed a little bit too long on one space and it twisted and that's usually what happens if you don't pull fast enough or you pull a little bit too hard in one space while you're pulling your cylinder. But your clay can get tired not only from up and down, but from the inside out. If you keep on choking in this manner, you're putting friction all on the outside of your cylinder. Notice how we're not gonna, we're, we're not choking the inside of our cylinder. That'd be massively hard. But you are touching and continue to touch the outside of your cylinder over and over again. Doing full chokes, doing part chokes and half chokes. And while you do this, you should note that the inside of your clay technically is receiving no friction while the outside of your clay is receiving all of the friction. This is something that I need to stress to you guys because sooner or later, not only will you get wiggles on the inside of your clay, you will start to see wiggles 
on the outside of your clay as well because they are all connected although they are on different spaces. Just to prove a point, I'm going to wiggle this on purpose. You see, I've only done it about one time and already it's starting to wiggle through the clay. This wasn't a cause of me pulling. This wasn't a cause of me putting too much friction on one point of the clay body. This was a point of me putting friction and stressing the clay body on the entire vessel. And this means that you can sure and bet that as long as this has a little wiggle here, there's most likely wiggles on the inside and somewhere on the outside of this clay body as well. This technique should only be done two or three different times if you're trying to get high on your cylinder. After that, you're going to friction out and stress out your clay. But there is kind of an easy fix to this, but there's a limit to how many times you can do this fix as well. You see this little wiggle right here? You can kind of take it out just by pulling. What pulling will do for the cylinder is that you'll be touching the inside and the outside at the same time, which if you pull perfectly will even out your clay body. This is kind of a last ditch effort to save your entire clay body because usually if you have a wrinkle you just pull in that one little space. But keep in mind, now you're going to make that one little space really thin and you're stressing the clay out a little bit more. But this is natural. This is going to happen when you start learning how to collar and choke. This doesn't mean you're bad at pulling. This doesn't mean you're bad at choking. This is something that happens to even the best throwers. This technique, if done correctly, and you can manage that little bit of swirl, will actually make beautiful bottles. You see, I choked in a little bit, I got a wiggle, I pulled it up and evened out the clay. I choked in even more, got a little wiggle, pulled it up even more, and I kept doing that until I got a bottle shape, or at least the mouthpiece to a bottle shape. This is something that a lot of throwers do. They'll end up choking, pulling, choking, pulling, until they get the right amount of space at the very top for their tops. The last choke that I want to show you guys today is called the focal choke. Now I've heard people call this a bunch of different things throughout my career, although I will say that this is something that is massively important for making shapes like this gourd here. You see, you can probably tell that I made the top with the first two chokes and then I popped out this body here and this body here. And that's basically what made these three different sections. But what about this middle section here? How did I make that? Well, with all the other chokes, we pretty much did four point and moved our hands. We did six point and then we moved our hands. We did full choke and then we moved our hands. With this choke, there's almost no moving of the hands, but it's very quick and very light. You can't put too much pressure on this choke simply because it will mess up your entire clay body. It's not meant to actually pull clay in, it's really just meant for one focal point. The focal point choke can be done with however you prefer your hands to be. You can either do a full choke, you can either do four point, six point, either way you want to go about it, whatever's comfortable for you. But it needs to be relatively fast and hard. Because if you spend too much time there, it'll end up wiggling even more. And I've already stressed out this clay enough. Go ahead, get your hands and figure out the point in which you want to choke inwards. Usually people pick a waistline to choke in. You see, now that I've done a focal point choke, you can probably see how I got from this shape to this shape right here. It's a very easy way to go ahead and make a waistline. And once I smooth this out, it's going to be really nice. This is probably the easiest choke to perform, although the hardest one to control. If I want to do the focal point choke and I end up squeezing and letting go really fast, I'm going to wobble my cylinder. And a lot of beginners seem to have a problem with panicking and taking their hands off of the wheel really fast. If you do this choke, just like when you pull, you need to be very, very still and then slowly let go of your cylinder. Potter tip. If you do do this, <laughs> do do. If you do this and you end up getting a considerable amount of wiggle in your cylinder, let's mess it up. You can always either pull or get your metal rib and straighten the part that wiggles 
nice and neat and even out the clay body. This technique is specifically used for making curvier forms. And yes, I'm going to show you the gourd again. I know you're tired of it. And the reason I keep bringing this gourd out is because I think it's a really good example of what choking in and collaring in is. Because somebody made this gourd. They made a cylinder and this is thrown in one piece. That means that somebody popped this portion out, collared this point in, popped this out, colored this in. These four techniques we've discussed today are pretty much how you make curvier things. And now that you've practiced almost your entire pottery career with pushing things out, now it's time to start making curvier and more shapely things and popping them in. I think the main problem is that the majority of these techniques have a very large issue with beginners making wiggle at the top of their cylinder, and that's fairly normal. I can give you a little tip for that as well. If you have something that has a lot of wiggle, yeah, 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 if you have something that ends up having a lot of wiggle like this, you can do what I ended up suggesting in a lot of other videos. Get your pin tool and use that pin tool trick. Go ahead and ride that pin tool right across. Don't poke straight in. Make sure it's kind of riding along the pin tool and just push into your clay body. Sooner or later, once you touch the other finger on the other side, it'll generally just kind of come off and you're left with nothing but a straight top. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. Hopefully you guys can kind of see how we get from a cylinder to this shape now. And once you get really, really proficient at choking and collaring and doing focal point collaring, you can end up doing very high level stuff like this. Although not functional, stuff like this isn't a testament to skill. Whoever made this is pretty much telling you, hey, I got an entire cylinder, popped it out as much as I could, and choked it in at multiple focal points. Choked it in here, made a tiny little choke here, and then made a nice little nozzle here, while still making space for an air hole so that it doesn't blow up in the kiln. And sooner or later, you will get to this point with enough practice making stuff like this. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful potter eyes to see. We have a fantastic Facebook and Discord community with tons of helpful and new artists over there. We have everything from beginners to advanced, or some people even making their own glazes over there, and I'm quite amazed at the skill level. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Good luck on your next projects, and I will see you Dirty Potters next week. You guys, you guys know I like them curvy.